Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is the hegemonic provision of public goods. And the big question for the lecture is why do hegemons provide public goods? Now, notice here that we have this new terminology. We have a hegemon. A hegemon is essentially a, a big fancy way of saying a powerful country in the international system. So right now you could say the United States is the world's hegemon at the moment. And what we want to find out is why these guys have incentive to provide public goods, whereas smaller actors will not. So what we're going to be doing in this lecture is we're going to take a look at two similar situations, one without a hegemon and one with a hegemon, and we're going to see that there is a difference in the outcomes in these interactions. So the first situation looks like this. We have 100 countries in the international system. Each can individually create a public good or not. And the example we want to talk about here is protection from Somali pirates around the Horn of Africa. Payoffs look like this. If at least one country provides the public good, everyone receives 10 units of value. So this is a little bit different from what we saw in the last lecture, where every country who produced a public good added to the total value of the public good to be shared by everyone. Here, if one country produces the public good, everyone receives 10. If two countries produce the public good, then everyone still receives 10. They're not receiving 20, and they're not receiving 30 if three guys are producing. As long as one, two, three, four, or all the way to 100 are producing the public good, then we're only receiving 10, right? I can't make the pirates even less likely to attack my ship if there's already a 0% probability that's going to happen because one country is safely patrolling these seas. Now, again, to provide public goods, you can't do that for free. If we're going to be patrolling those waters, we have to send ships out there to do that. And so it's going to cost us C to provide, where this cost level is somewhere between 10 and 100. And that's what happens if you provide. If you free ride, though, that costs nothing, right? But it relies on someone else to provide the benefit. You know that you're not going to be getting the benefit from yourself. You're going to have to rely on someone else to do it. That's what free riding is. Now, notice that when you provide, you get 10 minus C. If you don't provide, you get 10 if someone else provides and zero if no one else provides. And because C is greater than 10, providing guarantees you a negative payoff, right? You get 10 minus a number that's greater than 10. So that's a negative number for providing. Whereas at worst, if you don't provide, you get, no, you get nothing if no one else provides. That's the worst possible outcome. And you might get 10 if someone else provides. So even in the worst case scenario, if you don't provide, you're doing better than if you provided. And so as a result, that means you're not going to be providing, but that means everyone is not going to be providing. And so you have 100 countries not each enjoying this 10 units apiece for the provision of the public good. So you have 1,000 units lost. And that's a bad thing. And that's an unfortunate thing. And that's something that you might want to resolve. Well, one way you can resolve it is by adding a hegemon to the system. So we're going to tweak this a little bit here and add a first 101st country to the situation. So the first 100 countries are just going to be the same as before, where they benefit 10 from the provision of the public good. But this 101st guy, he's a big, powerful actor in the system. He's a hegemon, and he receives a disproportionate share of of the public good because he's going to be using it more than anybody else. So he actually receives 100 if the public good is provided and zero if it's not. So notice he really likes this public good to be provided unlike the other guys who are lukewarm to it. Now, think about the hegemon strategy. He can make a very quick inference that no other country will provide the public good. And the logic is just what we saw in the previous situation where the hegemon didn't exist. For one of these smaller countries to provide the public good, it's going to have to pay a cost that's greater than 10 that exceeds the benefit of the public good. And so each of these countries is individually not going to provide the public good. And the hegemon knows that. So that means the hegemon's decision boils down to whether it should provide the public good, knowing that no one else will, or whether it should not provide the public good, knowing that if it does not provide the public good, then no one is going to be providing the public good. Well, if it provides, it gets 100 minus C, and if it doesn't provide, it gets zero. But notice that C is less than 100, so that means by providing, the hegemon gets a strictly positive payoff, and by not providing it, it gets zero. Well, that means providing in a positive amount is better than not providing, and so the hegemon provides the public good, and everyone enjoys it. So what we see here is that without the big guy, no one receives any of the benefits. But with the big guy, everyone receives a value of 10, despite having put no extra effort into the game, right? Even with this hegemon existing, 
we don't have anyone else providing effort and they're still receiving the benefit purely because he's there to provide it for everyone else. And of course, the hegemon is still happy here because by providing it, he's enjoying the benefits and he really enjoys those benefits a lot. So he's willing to pay uh, a higher cost than these other, other guys would be to produce the public good. And just as a, a quick little look into this and see if this holds any weight whatsoever, I looked into Operation Ocean Shield, which is the mission to protect those ships around the Horn of Africa from Somali pirates. And sure enough, the United States, who does a disproportionate amount of the trading in that area, also has a disproportionate number of ships patrolling those seas. So that's a pie, a pie chart of all of the countries that are providing naval ships to protect that area. And you can see that the United States with 13 ships is beating everyone else. The United Kingdom and Denmark are the two other guys who are providing the most, and they're only providing three apiece. So sure enough, the United States, the hegemon is providing more of the public good than anyone else is. And they're getting some help from other guys as well, but it's really the United States that's pushing this one and making sure that the public good is going to be provided for by creating this substantial base, which is what we might have hoped for here by what we've seen in the model. So that is how hegemons can create public goods. This was sort of a positive way that public goods can be provided for. And in the next lecture, we're going to switch things up and do a more negative way where you can coerce someone into providing a public good. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Take care.